Hello, I'm Robert DuBose, and this week we want to take a look at Lesson 12 of our Sabbath School, and that will be talking about the Sabbath, experiencing and living the character of God. Before we begin, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the Sabbath, for this gift of time that you've given to each one of us. Help us to appreciate the Sabbath. Help us to appreciate what it means, what it represents in our lives. May we gain an insight from this time together. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Humankind has been enjoying the Sabbath since creation, and we'll all keep it for eternity. We read that in Genesis 2, 1 through 3, and Isaiah 66, 22 and 23. The Sabbath is a monument in time. It's a milestone in the path that reminds us where we come from, where we are, and where we're going to be. Let's study how we can use this blessed gift from God. We find that the Sabbath is a time to learn, a time to rediscover, a time to prioritize, a time to get to know God better, and a time to share. We read in Genesis 1, 26 through 31, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over every living creature that moves on the earth. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. We find also that the Sabbath is a time to learn Genesis 2, 3 tells us that then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. The account of creation ends with these words about the Sabbath. Adam was quite busy on Friday. On the other hand, Eve only enjoyed some hours of Friday with her husband. Their first full day together was an especially blessed day. The Creator Himself sanctified the seventh day with His presence. On that day, they learned more about their Creator and the creation around them. By the end of the day, they were invited to spend another full day with God on the next Sabbath, in addition to the daily evening meetings. We still receive the invitation every Sabbath an invitation to spend a full day learning about our wonderful Creator. As I was studying this part of the lesson, it reminded me of my childhood. My dad is a pastor, he's retired now. I have three brothers, and the four sons together spent many happy Sabbaths out in nature learning about God and His creation, and it brought back pleasant memories. Let's read in Genesis 2, 1 through 9, and 15 through 25. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing, so that on the seventh day he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, 
because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. <clears throat> Continue reading in verse 5. Now no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. We continue reading in verse 9. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. We continue reading in verse 18. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. Reading in verse 21. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. And the man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united with his wife, and they become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked, and they were not ashamed. Another purpose of the Sabbath is a time to rediscover See, for the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, he gives you on the sixth day bread for two days. Let every man remain in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. We read that in Exodus 16, verse 29. The people of Israel had been forced to work on Sabbath under the yoke of Egypt. After liberating them, God wanted them to rediscover the Sabbath. He wanted them to rediscover who he is, how much he loved them, and the plans he had for them. God used manna to teach them about the Sabbath. He performed a weekly double miracle. First of all, he sent twice the usual amount of manna on Friday, and nothing at all on Sabbath. And second, the manna that the people cooked on Friday was still good on Sabbath. However, the manna they tried to keep other days bred worms. God is inviting us to today rediscover him every Sabbath, to understand his character better, and to have the strongest possible relationship with him. We read more about this in Exodus 16, verses 14 through 29. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some gathered little. Reading in verse 18. 
And when they measured it by the omer, the one who had gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. And then Moses said to them, no one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept parting of it, part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. Each morning, everyone gathered as much as they needed, and when the sun grew hot, it melted away. And as we continue in verse 22, on the sixth day they gathered twice as much, two omers for each person. And the leaders of the community came and reported this to Moses. And he said to them, this is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow is to be a day of Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. So bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil. Save whatever is left and keep it until morning. So they saved it until morning as Moses commanded, and it did not stink or get maggots in it. And then in verse 25, we read, Eat it today, Moses said, because today is a Sabbath to the Lord. You will not find any of it on the ground today. Six days you are to gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will not be any. Nevertheless, some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather it, but they found none. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions? Bear in mind that the Lord has given you the Sabbath. That is why on the sixth day he gives you bread for two days. Everyone is to stay where they are on the seventh day. No one is to go out. Another purpose for the Sabbath is a time to prioritize. We read in Isaiah 58, if you call, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth, and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Isaiah 58, 13, and 14. As you can see in Isaiah 58, God called his people to reconsider their priorities. They fasted and asked God to make them prosper, but they were also exploiting their workers and oppressing the defenseless. We read that in verse 1 through 5. God explained that the right approach is the opposite. We should take care of ourselves, of others, and help those in need first. Then we will prosper. Luke, pardon me, verses 6 through 12. This comes with a call to enjoy the Sabbath, to rest in the company of God, leaving ourself and our business aside. We read that in verses 13 and 14. The Sabbath helps us to put God first and to give everything else its right priority. We read further in Isaiah 58, 1 through 14. Shout it aloud, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Verse 4 says, your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? 
to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Verse 7, we continue. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go forth before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression and the pointing finger and the malicious talk. Verse 10, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of the broken walls and restorer of streets with dwellings. Verse 13, if you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord and I will cause you to ride in triumph on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. The Sabbath is also a time to know God. Mark 2, 27 and 28 says, And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. The law was read and interpreted every Sabbath in the synagogues. They wanted to understand the will of God better. However, they tried to describe in detail what could and couldn't be done on Sabbath in order to fulfill the law. This way, they turned the Sabbath into a burden. Jesus used his actions and words to remind them of the true purpose of the Sabbath. It was made to become a blessing for us and for those around us. We are encouraged to meet the Lord of the Sabbath more intimately on Sabbath. Our obedience should be the result of our gratitude for all he has done for us. We read further in Matthew 12, 1 through 13. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick some heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath. He answered, Haven't you read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God, and he and his companions ate the consecrated bread, which was not lawful for them to do, but only for the priests. Verse 5, or haven't you read in the law that the priests on Sabbath duty in the temple desecrate the Sabbath and yet are innocent? I tell you that something greater than the temple is here. If you had known what these words mean, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the innocent. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Going on from that place, he went into their synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Looking for a reason to bring charges against Jesus, they asked him, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Verse 11, and he said to them, if any of you has a sheep and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will you not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a person than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. So he stretched it out and it was completely restored, just as sound as the other. The Sabbath is also a time to share 
Acts 13, 42 tells us that when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. The first Christians shared the gospel in their Sabbath meetings. They proved that Jesus was the Messiah with the scriptures and their personal testimony. We read this in Acts 13, 16, 17, and 18. We have the opportunity to share what we know about the scriptures and Jesus during the Bible study and our Sabbath school classes. Besides the fundamental truths of our faith can also be shared during the public biblical preaching on Sabbath. We read in Luke 13, starting in verse 10, on a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues. And a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Then in verse 14, Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leader said to the people, there are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, You hypocrites, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound for eighteen long years, be set free on the Sabbath from what bound her? Verse 17 says, When he said this all his opponents were humiliated but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing we read in these scriptures that jesus told us very clearly that it was a fine thing to do good on the sabbath reminds me of my days when i was a pathfinder as a young man and later on as an adult when i was a pathfinder leader when my children were in the club we spent many Sabbaths doing good work for God, going out and helping, passing out literature, passing out food, doing things that would bring credit to our Heavenly Father. And I want to close our lesson this morning with um, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, page 368, where Ellen White tells us that God teaches that we should assemble in his house to cultivate the attributes of perfect love. This will fit the dwellers of earth for the mansions that Christ has gone to prepare for all who love him. There they will assemble in the sanctuary from Sabbath to Sabbath, from one new moon to another, to unite in loftiest strains of song, in praise and thanksgiving to him who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Let's close our Sabbath lesson today with prayer. We want to thank you, Heavenly Father, for learning that doing good on the Sabbath is pleasing to you. Help us to find ways to keep your Sabbath day holy and to share your love with those around us so that we may find the Sabbath a joy and a delight. Take us all to heaven at last when you come. Send your Holy Spirit to continue to lead and guide us. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.